Introduction Incentives are the hidden persuaders of society, subtly influencing our wallets, pride, and conscience, said Nobel laureate economist Daniel Kahneman. At any given moment, numerous individuals aim to shape your behavior, politicians, police officers, doctors, bosses, parents, and spouses, to name a few. Their tactics may range from threats and bribes to charm and deceit, but they all share a common strategy, leveraging incentives. An incentive is simply a means of urging people to do more of a good thing or less of a bad thing. These incentives fall into three main categories, economic, social, and moral. The most effective incentives, those that drive significant behavioral change, often combine elements from all three. Consider how these incentives operate in various aspects of life, especially in the realm of crime prevention, where their interplay becomes particularly evident. Economic Incentives Economic incentives are straightforward and often tangible. They involve financial rewards or penalties designed to influence behavior. For example, the threat of a fine or imprisonment acts as a powerful deterrent against criminal activity. The potential loss of employment, income, and assets due to criminal actions reinforces this economic disincentive. Conversely, positive economic incentives, such as bonuses or raises for ethical behavior, encourage individuals to act in ways that benefit themselves and society. Social Incentives Social incentives revolve around our need for acceptance and approval from others. Humans are inherently social creatures, and the desire to be seen positively by peers can be a strong motivator. In the context of crime, the fear of social stigma and ostracization often prevents individuals from engaging in illegal activities. For instance, the prospect of being labeled a thief or a fraudster and the consequent damage to one's reputation can be more daunting than the legal penalties. Moral Incentives Moral incentives are tied to an individual's internal value system and conscience. They compel people to act in accordance with their ethical beliefs and principles. Most individuals have an innate sense of right and wrong, shaped by upbringing, culture, and personal experiences. This internal moral compass discourages actions that are perceived as unethical or harmful. For instance, a person might refrain from cheating or stealing not out of fear of punishment but because they believe it is morally wrong. Combined Impact the most successful incentives, those that attain the desired change in behavior, combine all three types. Take crime prevention as an example. While the risk of imprisonment, economic incentive, is a strong deterrent, it is the combination of social disapproval and moral guilt that creates a robust barrier against criminal activities. People refrain from committing crimes not just because they fear the economic repercussions, but also because they do not want to be seen as immoral or face social condemnation. Practical Implications Understanding the interplay of these incentives can lead to more effective policies and strategies. Policymakers and leaders can craft more nuanced approaches by considering how economic, social, and moral incentives work together. For example, anti-smoking campaigns that combine economic disincentives, higher taxes on cigarettes, social incentives, public health campaigns highlighting the social undesirability of smoking, and moral incentives, emphasizing the harm to oneself and loved ones are more likely to succeed than those relying on just one type of incentive. Conclusion Incentives are the driving forces behind our decisions and actions, shaping our behavior in subtle yet profound ways. By recognizing and leveraging the economic, social, and moral dimensions of incentives, we can create environments that promote positive behaviors and discourage negative ones. As you navigate your daily life, consider the incentives at play and how they influence not only your choices but also the actions of those around you. This awareness can lead to more informed decisions and a deeper understanding of the forces that shape our world. Introducing incentives can often have unintended consequences on people's behavior. This concept, while seemingly straightforward, holds a depth of complexity that can lead to unexpected outcomes. Consider the myriad of scenarios where incentives play a role in shaping behavior. Parents might offer small treats to children for completing homework, hoping to instill good study habits. Companies frequently dangle bonuses in front of employees who meet sales targets, aiming to boost productivity. These strategies are rooted in the belief that incentives, by their very nature, can effectively guide actions towards desired outcomes. However, the reality is more nuanced. Incentives operate within intricate environments where seemingly minor adjustments can ripple outward, creating significant, and sometimes counterproductive, effects. This phenomenon can be particularly pronounced in economic and social contexts, where human behavior is influenced by a multitude of factors beyond mere financial gain. For instance, consider the case of daycare centers in Haifa, Israel, 
where economists sought to curb the incidence of parents arriving late to pick up their children by introducing a small $3 fine as a deterrent. Counterintuitively, the introduction of this economic disincentive did not reduce the number of late pickups, instead, it doubled them. This outcome highlights a critical flaw in the design of the incentive. The fine, though intended as a penalty, was perceived by parents as an acceptable cost for being late, effectively commodifying the act of tardiness. The nominal amount of $3 was insufficient to convey the seriousness of the issue, inadvertently signaling to parents that late pickups were not a significant problem. More profoundly, this economic disincentive supplanted an existing moral disincentive, the guilt parents felt when arriving late. Prior to the fine, parents were likely motivated by a sense of responsibility and the social norm of punctuality. The introduction of a monetary penalty allowed parents to assuage their guilt by paying a fee, thereby reducing their internal moral conflict. The behavior became a transaction rather than a breach of social etiquette, undermining the original deterrent effect of moral and social incentives. Moreover, the experiment demonstrated that once an incentive structure is altered, reversing its effects can be challenging. When the daycare centers later removed the fines, the number of late pickups did not decrease. This suggests that the initial moral and social disincentives were irrevocably weakened. The parents had recalibrated their behavior based on the new economic framework and removing the fine did not restore the previous sense of moral obligation. This example underscores the complexity of designing effective incentives. When introducing new incentives, it's crucial to consider the existing motivational landscape and how new incentives might interact with or displace current ones. Policymakers, educators, and business leaders should be wary of simplistic solutions that do not account for the multifaceted nature of human behavior. Effective incentive structures must balance economic, social, and moral factors to avoid unintended consequences and truly influence behavior in a desired manner. In conclusion, while incentives can be powerful tools for shaping behavior, they must be employed with careful consideration of the broader context in which they operate. Missteps in incentive design can lead to counterproductive outcomes, as illustrated by the Hyfid Daycare study. By acknowledging the interplay between economic, social, and moral incentives, and by designing comprehensive strategies that account for these dynamics, it is possible to create more effective and sustainable behavior changes. Incentives are context-dependent, what works when it's sunny might not when it's raining. This concept underscores the intricate relationship between human behavior and the external environment. Have you ever robbed a bank? Probably not, because various disincentives, such as the threat of prison, loss of social standing, and a guilty conscience, deter you. Yet, despite these deterrents, some people do rob banks. Why? because different people react differently to the same incentives. This variability is not just between different individuals but can also occur within the same person under different circumstances. Consider the case of Paul Feldman, who ran a bagel delivery business to office snack rooms, leaving an unattended cash box for customers to pay for their bagels. Feldman's experiment revealed intriguing insights into honesty and the role of context and behavior. Each customer faced the same incentive to pay, the desire to appear honest, but payment rates varied significantly depending on several factors. Personal mood, influenced by external conditions, played a significant role. For instance, payment rates were higher on unseasonably warm days and lower on unseasonably cold ones. This suggests that weather can have a direct impact on how people perceive and respond to incentives. When people are in a better mood due to pleasant weather, they may be more likely to act honestly and fulfill social expectations. Stressful periods such as Christmas and Thanksgiving showed a marked decrease in payment rates, while more relaxed holidays saw an increase. This indicates that the stress and busyness associated with certain times of the year can diminish the effectiveness of incentives, as people might prioritize convenience or self-interest over social norms. Conversely, during less stressful periods, people may feel more at ease and more inclined to adhere to expected behaviors. Office morale also had a significant impact on honesty. In workplaces with a positive atmosphere, employees were more likely to pay for their bagels. This highlights how a supportive and happy environment can enhance the effectiveness of incentives. A notable example was the increase in honesty observed after the 9-11 attacks, attributed to a surge in national empathy and solidarity. During this period, the shared experience of a national tragedy seemed to strengthen social bonds and increase the importance of maintaining communal norms, even in mundane activities like paying for a bagel. These findings underscore that the effectiveness of incentives can fluctuate with changes in global, local, or personal circumstances. 
The incentives that work for some people on certain days may not be effective on other days, even for the same individuals. Recognizing this variability is crucial for designing effective incentive structures. In practical terms, this means that policymakers, employers, and anyone trying to influence behavior must consider the broader context in which incentives are applied. For example, an incentive program that works well in a high morale office might fail in a more stressed or unhappy workplace. Similarly, Incentives that motivate people during calm periods might be ineffective during times of high stress or crisis. In summary, understanding the nuanced and context-dependent nature of incentives is crucial. Feldman's Bagel experiment shows that the same incentives can lead to different outcomes depending on the mood and circumstances of individuals. This insight highlights the importance of tailoring incentive systems to account for varying conditions to achieve desired behaviors consistently. By appreciating the complex interplay between incentives and context, we can design more effective strategies for influencing behavior in various settings. Experts leveraging their informational advantage to exploit laypeople for economic gain is a pervasive issue across many domains. The asymmetry in knowledge between experts and laypeople creates a situation where individuals seeking guidance often rely heavily on the expertise and recommendations of professionals. This reliance is particularly pronounced in high-stakes transactions or situations where the consequences of uninformed decisions can be significant. In the realm of healthcare, for instance, patients trust doctors to provide accurate diagnoses and recommend appropriate treatments. However, this trust can be undermined when doctors have financial incentives tied to specific treatments or pharmaceutical products. Pharmaceutical companies, through marketing strategies and incentives, can influence doctors to prescribe certain medications that may not always be the most effective or cost-efficient for patients. Similarly, in legal matters, individuals rely on lawyers to navigate complex legal frameworks and advocate for their best interests. Lawyers, with their understanding of legal intricacies, have a significant advantage in negotiating terms and settlements. Yet, their motivations may be influenced by the potential for higher fees or settlements, which could lead them to prioritize their own financial gain over achieving the best outcome for their clients. The real estate industry provides another compelling example. When buying or selling property, individuals often depend on real estate agents to guide them through pricing negotiations, market trends, and legal requirements. While agents are expected to act in their clients' best interests, their commission-based compensation can create conflicts of interest. Agents may steer clients towards quicker sales or purchases that maximize their own commissions, rather than patiently seeking the best deal for their clients. Moreover, in financial services, where advisors provide investment advice, managed portfolios, or sell financial products, conflicts of interest are prevalent. Advisors may recommend investments that generate higher commissions or fees for themselves, even if these investments do not align with the client's risk tolerance or long-term financial goals. This can result in suboptimal investment decisions that benefit the advisor more than the client. These examples underscore the importance of transparency, due diligence, and critical thinking when engaging with experts. Laypeople should be aware of potential conflicts of interest and carefully evaluate the advice they receive. Seeking multiple opinions, conducting independent research, and asking probing questions can help mitigate the risks associated with informational asymmetry and ensure that decisions are made in their best interests rather than solely to benefit the expert. Ultimately, fostering a relationship of trust and accountability between experts and their clients is essential for maintaining integrity and fairness in professional interactions. Experts leveraging fear and anxiety to exploit laypeople is a tactic rooted in the asymmetry of knowledge and power dynamics inherent in many professional client relationships. When individuals confront unfamiliar or daunting situations, such as buying a car, investing in stocks, or arranging a funeral, they often rely on experts for guidance and reassurance. However, this dependence can be manipulated when experts capitalize on clients' fears to steer decisions that serve their own interests rather than the client's welfare. For instance, in the automotive industry, a salesperson might exploit a customer's fear of safety by dissuading them from purchasing a cheaper model, emphasizing potential risks that may not be substantiated. Similarly, in real estate transactions, agents can play on the fear of missing out FOMO, pushing clients to bid higher act quickly under the guise of securing their dream home before it's too late. In financial services, advisors might invoke fear of missed opportunities or financial loss to pressure clients into making hasty investment decisions that benefit the advisor's commissions. The emotional vulnerability of individuals in distressing situations, such as arranging a funeral, is another target for exploitation. 
funeral directors, aware of their clients' emotional fragility and lack of familiarity with funeral costs, may exploit fears of not honoring the deceased adequately to upsell more expensive caskets or services, despite cheaper alternatives being equally appropriate. Moreover, social fears and anxieties about judgment can exacerbate these dynamics. Clients may fear appearing ignorant or frugal, which experts can exploit to steer decisions towards more profitable outcomes for themselves. This social pressure can coerce individuals into accepting recommendations without thorough consideration or seeking second opinions, thereby further entrenching the expert's control over the transaction. To counteract these manipulative tactics, laypeople should cultivate awareness of their emotional responses and recognize when fear is being used to influence decisions. Implementing strategies such as seeking multiple opinions, conducting independent research, and taking time to reflect before committing to major decisions can help mitigate the impact of fear-based manipulation. By actively managing information asymmetry and asserting their right to informed choice, individuals can protect themselves from being exploited by experts who prioritize their own financial gain over client well-being. Ultimately, fostering transparency and accountability in professional interactions is crucial to rebalancing power dynamics and ensuring that expert advice serves the genuine interests of clients rather than exploiting their vulnerabilities. Awareness and informed decision-making are key tools in navigating complex transactions and relationships where fear and anxiety may be leveraged for economic gain. The advent of the Internet has revolutionized access to information, leveling the playing field between experts and consumers in unprecedented ways. Prior to the widespread use of the Internet, experts held significant informational advantages across various industries, wielding their specialized knowledge to influence decisions and often to their financial advantage. This disparity was particularly evident in sectors like insurance, where pricing and policy details were traditionally opaque and difficult for consumers to compare effectively. The example of life insurance in the 1990s illustrates this shift vividly. Before the Internet, consumers seeking life insurance policies faced a daunting task of gathering price quotes from multiple providers, often relying solely on agents or brokers for information. This lack of transparency allowed insurers to maintain higher premiums without fear of direct comparison by consumers. However, with the emergence of price comparison websites, such as those for insurance, consumers gained unprecedented access to a wealth of information at their fingertips. Suddenly, they could effortlessly compare premiums and coverage options across numerous insurers in real time, enabling them to make informed decisions based on competitive pricing and policy features. This empowerment of consumers through the Internet has extended beyond insurance to various other sectors where expert knowledge was once paramount. Whether purchasing a home, investing in stocks, or seeking medical advice, individuals can now research and educate themselves extensively online before engaging with experts. Websites, forums, and review platforms provide peer experiences, expert opinions, and detailed information that were previously restricted to industry insiders or professionals. This democratization of information has not only enhanced consumer confidence and autonomy but has also fostered a more competitive marketplace, where experts are incentivized to offer transparent, competitive services and products. Moreover, the Internet has facilitated greater accountability and scrutiny of expert advice and services. Consumers can now cross-reference recommendations, verify credentials, and read reviews from other users, mitigating the risk of falling victim to misinformation or manipulation. This transparency encourages experts to maintain high standards and integrity in their practices, knowing that consumers have access to alternative options and information sources. In conclusion, the Internet has significantly reduced the informational advantage that experts historically held over consumers. By enabling rapid access to information and facilitating direct comparisons, it has empowered individuals to make more informed decisions, negotiate better deals and demand greater accountability from service providers across various industries. As technology continues to evolve, the balance of power between experts and consumers is likely to shift further in favor of transparency, choice, and fair competition in the marketplace. The phenomenon of penalizing sellers for omitted information highlights the pervasive impact of information asymmetry in consumer transactions. In markets where sellers possess more information about their products than buyers, even the absence of specific details can trigger negative assumptions and consequences. Take the example of buying a new car, the steep depreciation immediately after purchase is largely attributed to buyers assuming undisclosed issues or reasons for the sale, despite the car being mechanically sound. This perception arises because buyers lack complete information about the seller's motivations and the car's history, 
leading them to fill in gaps with assumptions of potential defects or undisclosed problems. Similarly, in the realm of online dating, omitting a photo is seen as a red flag. Potential matches often interpret this omission as an attempt to conceal unattractive physical traits or lack of confidence, resulting in reduced interest or skepticism towards the person's profile. This illustrates how the absence of expected information can prompt negative judgments and diminish trust, impacting the outcome of interactions and transactions. The critical lesson from these scenarios is twofold, first, sellers must recognize that withholding information, whether intentional or unintentional, can create mistrust and speculation among buyers. Transparency and disclosure are crucial in building trust and minimizing negative assumptions. Second, from a consumer perspective, it is essential to approach transactions with a critical eye, considering not only the information presented but also what may be omitted or left unclear by the seller. This awareness empowers buyers to make more informed decisions and reduces the likelihood of being misled or disappointed due to incomplete information. In conclusion, the cultural norm of penalizing sellers for omitted information underscores the significance of transparency and full disclosure in fostering trust and fair transactions. As information technology continues to evolve, enabling greater access to information, consumers are increasingly vigilant about expecting comprehensive details and transparency from sellers. By addressing information asymmetry through open communication and honesty, both sellers and buyers can contribute to a more equitable and satisfactory marketplace experience. When it comes to assessing risks, human judgment often diverges from statistical reality, influenced by factors like media coverage and perceived control. Our tendency to overestimate risks associated with vivid, sensational events, such as plane crashes or terrorist attacks, is driven by their frequent portrayal in the media, which amplifies their visibility in our minds. Consequently, we inflate the likelihood of these events occurring, despite their statistical rarity. In contrast, Less dramatic risks, like swimming pool accidents, which are statistically more common, receive less attention and thus are often underestimated in terms of their potential danger. Moreover, our perception of control significantly shapes how we assess risks. Activities where we feel in command, such as driving a car, often seem less risky than those where control is perceived as lacking, like flying in an airplane. This illusion of control can lead to a skewed risk assessment, while the actual statistical risks may be comparable between driving and flying, our feeling of agency behind the wheel versus passively sitting on a plane affects how we perceive these risks. Considerations of these biases are crucial for making informed decisions. Recognizing our propensity to focus on prominent, media-highlighted risks and our tendency to feel more secure in situations where we believe we have control are pivotal steps in overcoming these cognitive biases. By seeking out accurate, evidence-based information about risks rather than relying solely on emotional reactions or media narratives, individuals can cultivate a more rational approach to assessing and managing risks in everyday life. Ultimately, by acknowledging these biases and employing a critical mindset grounded in factual understanding, individuals can better navigate the complexities of risk assessment and make decisions that align more closely with actual probabilities, thereby promoting a more balanced perspective on personal safety and security. The human tendency to attribute causality based solely on the simultaneous occurrence of two events is a common cognitive pitfall. Take, for instance, the disparity between police presence and homicide rates in Washington DC compared to Denver. Despite Washington DC having significantly more police officers per capita, it also experiences a much higher homicide rate compared to Denver. Intuitively, one might jump to the conclusion that the increased police presence is causing the higher homicide rate. However, correlation does not necessarily imply causation. A classic example of this misconception is observed in the realm of money and politics. It's widely believed that the amount of money spent on political campaigns directly influences electoral outcomes. Candidates with larger campaign budgets often win, leading many to conclude that money is the decisive factor in electoral success. Yet, empirical studies reveal a more nuanced reality, while successful candidates tend to attract more funding, the reverse relationship that money directly causes electoral victories, is not supported by robust evidence. Research analyzing successive election cycles demonstrates that variations in campaign spending have minimal impact on electoral results. Winning candidates could significantly reduce their campaign expenditures without substantially affecting their vote share, while losers could double their spending with only marginal gains in voter support. This suggests that factors other than money, such as candidate appeal, campaign strategy, or broader socio-political dynamics, play a more decisive role in determining electoral outcomes. 
these examples underscore the importance of distinguishing between correlation and causation in our interpretations of events. Just because two variables exhibit a concurrent relationship does not imply a direct cause and effect link. Understanding this distinction is essential for making informed decisions and crafting effective policies based on accurate assessments of underlying factors rather than superficial associations. By critically evaluating causal claims and considering alternative explanations, we can mitigate the risks of erroneous assumptions and better grasp the complex interactions that shape social, economic, and political outcomes. When we attempt to explain causality between events, our inclination is often to gravitate towards immediate and apparent factors, sometimes overlooking more remote or indirect causes that might actually be more influential. Take the case of crime trends in the United States during the late 1980s and early 1990s, as violent crime rates soared by 80% over 15 years, experts scrambled to identify and propose explanations. Initially, they pointed to economic conditions, tough for gun control laws, innovative policing strategies, increased police presence, and higher incarceration rates as potential reasons for the surge in crime. However, what came as a surprise was the sudden and dramatic drop in crime rates in the early 1990s, contrary to earlier predictions of worsening crime trends. Experts then rushed to attribute this decline to the very factors they had previously cited, economic improvements, enhanced gun control measures, and so forth. Yet, subsequent analysis has revealed that these factors, while contributing somewhat, did not significantly account for the substantial decrease in crime. Interestingly, one critical factor that emerged retrospectively as a major contributor to the decline in crime was abortions. The legalization of abortion across the United States in 1973, following the Roe v. Wade decision, allowed women facing circumstances such as single parenthood or poverty to choose abortion. These socioeconomic conditions are known to be strong predictors of future criminal behavior among children. By reducing the number of children born into these circumstances in the 1970s and 1980s, the legalization of abortion inadvertently led to a decrease in the cohort of individuals who would have been at high risk of engaging in criminal activity in the late 1980s and 1990s. This example illustrates a crucial lesson in causal reasoning, the most obvious and immediate explanations may not always be the most significant. Remote or indirect factors, even ones not immediately apparent or discussed at the time, can play pivotal roles in shaping outcomes. It underscores the importance of critically examining all potential factors, including those that may seem less intuitive or less directly related, when seeking to understand complex phenomena and their causes. By broadening our perspective and considering a range of possible influences, we can avoid the trap of oversimplification and gain deeper insights into the dynamics at play in societal trends and behaviors. Free Economics by Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner is not just a book about economics, it's a journey into the hidden forces that shape our decisions and behaviors. At its core, the book challenges us to rethink conventional wisdom by exploring how incentives drive human actions in surprising ways. Whether it's the impact of economic incentives on crime rates or how informational advantages influence consumer choices, Free Economics reveals the intricate tapestry of motivations and biases that underlie our everyday interactions. Incentives as the book illustrates, come in various forms, economic, social, and moral, and their effects can be profound yet often counterintuitive. What motivates us to act in one context may fail to produce the desired outcomes in another, highlighting the importance of understanding the broader context in which incentives operate. Moreover, Freakonomics warns us about the unintended consequences of introducing incentives hastily, as seen in examples like the surprising increase in late pickups at daycare centers after the implementation of a small fine. Informational asymmetries, another focal point of the book, underscore how experts can exploit their knowledge advantage to gain economic benefits at the expense of lay people. However, the advent of the Internet has leveled this playing field to some extent, empowering consumers to access information and make more informed decisions independently. This shift has transformed industries like real estate and insurance, where consumers can now compare prices and policies with ease, reducing the sway of experts who once held exclusive knowledge. Human biases also play a crucial role in decision-making, particularly in how we assess risks and attribute causality. We tend to overestimate risks that are salient or that we feel we have little control over, such as the fear of flying versus driving despite comparable risks. Moreover, our inclination to attribute causality based on correlation can lead to misguided conclusions, as evidenced by historical analyses of crime rates and societal changes. As we reflect on the insights from Freakonomics, it becomes clear that our understanding of the world is often shaped by hidden influences and unconscious biases. 
By questioning assumptions and delving deeper into the underlying motivations behind human behavior, we can make more informed choices and navigate complex systems more effectively. In conclusion, Freakonomics invites us to embrace a mindset of critical inquiry and curiosity. It encourages us to challenge the status quo, rethink traditional narratives, and seek out the underlying truths that drive our decisions and shape our lives. As Stephen D. Levitt and Stephen J. Dubner aptly put it, morality, it could be argued, represents the way that people would like the world to work, whereas economics represents how it actually does work. Let's continue this journey of discovery together, sharing these insights far and wide. If you found this exploration enlightening, I encourage you to like and share this message with others who may benefit from its insights. Spread the knowledge and join us in unraveling the mysteries of human behavior. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more thought-provoking content. Together, let's contribute to expanding our understanding and making more informed decisions in our lives. Thank you for being part of this journey.